So when it comes to mixing engine oil, there's a lot of different opinions. Is it safe to mix a synthetic with a conventional? What about mixing a 5W30 with say a 20W50? Is that gonna cause a problem? Well, today we're about to find out. We're gonna do a pretty crazy experiment. We're gonna mix 10 different types of engine oil together, then add it to the crankcase of an engine, run that engine for 4,000 miles, and then do some testing on the engine oil to see how it held up. As a follow-up to a previous video on Amazon Basics Full Synthetic, we're gonna drain that out of this test engine that we're gonna be using today, send it off to an oil testing lab, have that oil analyzed for different qualities to see just how well the oil performed. We're also gonna do our own testing on that engine oil. So let's get the testing underway. Let's take a closer look at each engine oil that we'll be adding. We'll be using Redline, which is a full synthetic 5W30 ester-based engine oil. We're also gonna be using Penzo, which is an SAE 5W30 conventional engine oil. The Amazon Basics High Mileage Full Synthetic 10W30. Two different types of SuperTech, the 5W30 Full Synthetic and the 5W30 Conventional. Amsoil Dominator Racing Oil, which is 100% synthetic, 10W30. Mobile One Extended Performance 15,000 mile guaranteed protection, 5W30. Castrol GTX 10W30 Conventional Motor Oil. This is Shell Rotella T4 15W30. This is designed for diesel engines. So we're gonna see how this works in the gasoline engine. Valvoline Max Life, it's a high mileage synthetic blend, 10W30. I'm gonna take a quart of oil out of the one gallon container and add it to this quart jar. And this is what we'll be using for testing throughout the rest of the video. In the next test, we're gonna measure the film strength of the 10 oil blend. I'll begin by first calibrating the weight scales and then weighing the bearing. We'll weigh the bearing after the lubricity test and then measure the size of the wear scar. During this 10 minute test, we'll keep an eye on the oil level in the container to make sure that there's a constant supply of motor oil and we'll keep an eye on the bearing temperature as well. While this test doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll provide us with some great information on oil film strength. So how well did the bearing fare on the lubricity test? It actually did fairly well, surprisingly well actually. While it didn't do quite as well as most of the synthetic oils we've tested, it actually did just about as well. Up next, I'm gonna be draining the oil out of a 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. The vehicle has a little over 225,000 miles on it. It has about 4,300 miles on the existing oil change. So as I'm draining the oil, I'm gonna collect one quart of engine oil about midway through the drain cycle to use for various tests. This is the collection bottle that I'll be adding the used oil to, and then I'll send it off to the oil testing lab to have it analyzed. I just finished changing the oil on this 2003 Chevrolet Suburban with the 10 oil mix. The vehicle now has 225,354 miles on it. We'll run it until it has 229,000 miles, and then we'll drain out the oil and do some testing on it. It's been about six weeks since the last oil change and 4,500 miles later, we're about to change the oil and do some testing on it. There's little holes drilled in this dipstick. You can see the oil level is down to the second one, which indicates we're about a quart low on engine oil. So this is pretty normal for this engine with 229,000 miles on it. I'm gonna add the oil sample to this container and we'll send this off to the lab to have it analyzed. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the oil filter and take a look inside to see if there's any sort of contamination. Okay, now we have the filter media out. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a vise and squeeze all the excess oil out so we can get a good look at the filter media.
As you can see, the oil filter picked up all types of things that did not belong in the oil. This oil filter is pretty dirty. Now that we've collected the tin oil mix, let's test it again on the lubricity tester. This is the bearing after the tin oil mix. The amount of scoring on the bearing is almost identical to the new oil. In the next test, we're gonna see how the used Amazon oil compares to the tin oil mix for both new and used oil. We'll begin by placing the oil in the freezer that's set to 15 below zero Fahrenheit for 24 hours. New Amazon is in lane one, new blended oil lane two, used Amazon lane three, used blended oil lane four. The used Amazon is first to hit the slide, then used blended oil, then new Amazon. Both the used oils seem to have lost a little viscosity compared to the new oils. The used Amazon is clearly in the lead with the new Amazon in a very tight race with the used blended oil. This is really going to be a tight finish. Used Amazon finishes first and new Amazon narrowly edges out the used blended oil. Great performance by both oils. So the oil analysis report results are in and they are very interesting. To help explain the comments on the oil analysis report, I previously had the Amazon Basics oil analyzed and the copper and lead levels were a little high since I used a product called Engine Restore. I didn't inform the oil lab when I sent them the Amazon Basics oil. The copper and lead levels are declining as expected with each oil change as Engine Restore is wearing off. In reference to the 10 oil mix, they mentioned that the TBN, which I'll explain in a moment, is still good and that the oil could be used for longer. Looking at the oil analysis report, universal averages for motor oil is all the way to the right, the numbers for the Amazon basics is in the middle, and the 10 oil mix is on the left. How did both oils perform? Both oils actually did pretty good and could have lasted for longer than 4,500 miles. Let's first look at the wear metals. Aluminum in oil is an indication of piston and bearing wear. The aluminum levels in both oils was average to below average. Iron levels indicate wear to cylinders, valve train, and rotating parts. You'll see the iron levels are around half as high as universal averages. This vehicle uses a V8 engine with over 220,000 miles on it that experiences some pretty hard use, so this is actually pretty good. The high levels of copper and lead are from the product I use called Engine Restore that I had used before the Amazon Basics oil. So the results regarding engine wear are good for both oils. So what about anti-wear additives? Both the Amazon and the 10 oil mix, the molly levels were a little bit lower than average, which is fine. Some motor oils don't have any molly in them. Zinc is an anti-wear additive as well. The Amazon was slightly lower than universal averages, but the 10 oil mix was slightly higher than average. Phosphorus is an anti-wear additive as well, and the Amazon oil was exactly the same as universal average, but slightly higher for the 10 oil blend. Titanium can be found in some oil additives and is used in some intake valves and connecting rods. Titanium levels was slightly higher than average with the Amazon oil, but not a concern. Potassium could be the presence of antifreeze and is sometimes used as an additive in motor oil. The Potassium levels are very good with both tests. Silicon could be from dirt getting into the oil, sand casted parts, spray lubricants, antifreeze inhibitors, or an oil additive. The silicon levels both times was lower than average, which is good. Sodium as an additive, or it could indicate the presence of antifreeze. Either way, the sodium level is very good. In order to combat sludge and build up inside the engine, it's important that engines have detergents and dispersants. So let's look at those next. First, looking at calcium. The 10 oil mix had slightly higher amount of calcium than Amazon, but both were lower than the universal averages. Magnesium is also a detergent dispersant additive, and it was higher than the universal average for both. Finally, boron is a detergent dispersant and was a little higher in Amazon and the 10 oil mix than average. Looking at the viscosity of both oils, Amazon was slightly lower than normal, but still acceptable while the 10 oil blend was just fine. Flashpoint was good for both oils. I mentioned TBN earlier, and it stands for total base number, which is a measure of an oil's ability to neutralize combustion gas byproducts and acidic materials. Once the TBN level drops low enough, the oil can no longer effectively neutralize acidic byproducts. So the bottom line for both the 10 oil blend as well as the Amazon Basics is the engine oils both served their purpose and did a very good job. So do I recommend adding 10 different types of engine oil to your vehicle? Absolutely not. Actually, I have a very strong opinion about this, which is to only use the type of engine oil called for in the owner's manual. Now, with that being said, if you have to top off the oil with a different brand, as long as it meets the manufacturer's requirements, you should be just fine. It should not be a problem. 
Now, a lot of viewers requested this one. I hope you guys liked the video. I'm always looking for new video ideas because 100% of my videos are viewer recommended. I read and reply to just about every comment. So please keep those comments and those video ideas coming and I'll keep making videos. Please take care and I look forward to next time.